Okay, we're back. And now, we're back on the Hebrew grammar still. And I wanted to show you, like, let's take Futado, because it's so simple and good. And that's bundled in Bible works. It's a really helpful thing. Okay, let's just pick section 9 on prepositions and the wow conjunction. They call it Vav today, but that's not how it was pronounced in ancient Hebrew. Again, remember I've said before that there is a fashion now to use modern Hebrew pronunciation as if that was the old Hebrew pronunciation. It is not, and you are going to mess up on many things in um, interpretation of the Bible if you use the wrong pronunciation. The Bible tells you how to pronounce itself. And it tells you that in many ways, but one of them is that the LXX trans uh, you know, transliterates the Hebrew so you know both how the Greek was pronounced and how the Hebrew was pronounced by reference to the LXX. All right, it's wow, it's a wa, wa sound, not a vav sound. That's modern Hebrew that, that didn't exist until like the Middle Ages or later. Okay, so and even today, if you look at the Slavic languages, they are between a W sound and a V sound. Okay, in your Slavic languages, your V is really a W with a V, v ending. All right, okay, then especially like in Polish and German. Some, not always German, but definitely Polish and some of the other Slavic languages. Okay, that change to the V sound is a later addition. So when it says Vav, you have to understand that Futado is just caving in to the current fad to call it a Vav. All right, it's really disgusting because that's not how it was pronounced. If you want to know the Bible and the Bible's languages, you should learn the Bible's own pronunciation, which it tells you. But if you got to read these guys and you got to understand that they are scholars and they feel like they got to cave into other scholars, and it's a fashion right now among scholars to use a modern idea. Okay? So, here you are at this section. Now, let's say you didn't, re you, you were reading something in this section, say, like English prepositions. All right, well, let me, let, let's say he walked on the land. He walked on. We'll just use walked on because that's kind of common. Let's say you didn't remember you read it in this section. So you load up your thing. Let's, let's, wait a minute. You load up your thing, and let's say you're right here at the alphabet. Oh God, is the machine gonna crash again? It's not working. I can't get it to work. Okay, I'm gonna have to shut down again because the key, the key, there's a key conflict, and I can't override it. I can't undo mouse hooks in Bible Works in order to fix this. So I'll have to come back. Okay, hopefully I can get this to work this time. I wanted to show you Futado because he's really pretty good, and there are a couple other things that I just found that I need to show you. This is the book that I have in hardback. There's, it also has a CD that comes with it um, in the hardback. But, um, as you saw, or you, well, no, you're going to see because I have to do it here. Um, we're going to do the Hebrew paradigms. I think we're going to do them again because I think the sound wasn't all that good before. So, this is Frutado. He aims at being really simple. See, very clear writing. That's a sign of a good, a good book. If the writing is clear, and you understand it, granted that you know you have to still learn vocabulary, but if the person makes the point clear, then the person understands what he's talking about. That's the same thing you should use when you look for a lawyer or a computer guy. If all they give you is jargon and they can't make it clear in simple language, then chances are they don't know the material well enough. That's true for a lot of scholarship, too. If the scholar's presentation of the material is not clear, the scholar himself doesn't understand it that well. He hasn't progressed, he hasn't graduated beyond using the vocabulary to the actual mastery of the topic. All right? So that's something I look for in books. And Futado, even though you know, he's caving in like here with the Vav conjugation. 
he's caving into modern scholarship, but he, he writes clearly enough, so you just sort of have to understand that that's his personal, you know, maybe he had to do it in order to write his book and get it to sell. All right, but he understands things. All right, so then these are the sections. Now, what I wanted to show you was search and the problem with search. So we're going to search on the word PL. All right, and we list topics. Now, in order to search on it, you can't just click. Logic will tell you you can click. That was the problem I had. But the but the, the CHM file, there's nothing logical about it. You have to click display. There's no way you would know that. Okay, in other words, you have to first put your cursor here, and then you have to click display in order to get to that section. And you'll notice, because I have to use dark highlighting with Bible Works, because of the problem with the TSK database, where they coded the font to turn white. So now I have to use this dark font that doesn't apply anywhere else. Um, the PL is highlighted. Okay, the word PL is what I'm searching on. And I have to hit display, first go to the section. But see, you have to scroll through it. All right, you don't know where you're going to find your next occurrence of PL. Okay, yeah, you see a bunch of those. But what if there was only one? You could scroll too fast and not see it. So here's a better solution. You hit the right mouse click. That was the blue you just saw. You click on view source. And that brings up Notepad, because each one of these, it's, it's going to be in jargon. You won't know what page you're on or anything. But at least you can find what you're searching on each time. You use Notepad's Find function, and you, find, you look for the word. OK? Now, Notepad, like Word, will do a leapfrog. So there's your first occurrence of PL. It's in it's in code, so you don't need that. Then you look at it again, and you look at it again. You keep hitting Find Next. That's a crummy way to have to search the text, okay? But this but CHM files are crummy files. What a smart person would have done is they would have put this this file not into a CHM format, but into PDF or HTML. And if they want to protect it, they could have created a container to protect it. But instead, they use a CHM file, which is really lousy for searching. Now, BibleWorks knows that. They were stuck with this. It's not their fault. OK? So given this kind of bad searching, you've got only the alternative I showed you with the right click and view source per page, all right, in which case, Unlike the, the CHM file, which shows you the page number in the hardback, you're not going to know what page number you're on if you're doing view source. Okay, you just won't know. Okay, the other thing that you can do is to create what's called a text a decompiler. This it will decompile all of your um, HTM files. I mean your CHM file like this, the whole thing which is a compilation of a bunch of HTM files, it'll retrieve them back into HTM files. All right, and there are a lot of decompilers on the market you can buy. I, I did eText Wizard, which isn't one of the best. Um, it's got bugs. A lot of them have bugs, so you have to be careful what you buy. Um, but that's your other alternative. Then you take your decompiler and you literally append every one of these files to create a single Word document, all right, because Word can convert all of this into one file with HTML, and then you can convert it into Word and read it into Word and preserve the page numbers. That's your only other alternative. So basically, these modules that you can buy are undone, their, their effectiveness is undone by the fact that you can't properly search in them. Okay, that you might as well buy the hardback. So th that's something that is out of favor with um, having the CHM file. And now my computer is beginning to crash again, so I'm going to cut this off.
Okay, uh, hopefully this won't bomb again. I need to uh, show you more about the resources. We're going to Hebrew grammars. I want to show you more about the paradigms next. Oh God, I hope this works. Okay, um, I want to play the sound again because I didn't play it so well. This is the Hebrew paradigm. Ratal, Ratala, Ratalta, Ratalt, Ratalti, Ratalu, Ratalten, Ratalten, Ratalnu. Okay, so that was the cow. I just wanted to replay it. Again, I'd, I'm not a fan of learning the language this way. I'm a fan of looking it up in the Bible, and then when you see it in the Bible, you, you go to your reference material to find out what the what it means okay and here you have the paradigm so that you can even hear it said and his pronunciation is okay it's a little little too sephardic for me but that's my preference okay now the the other thing was in the greek paradigms when i played it before it's too loud or maybe I haven't played it yet. I've done so many videos, I don't remember where this is in the sequence. But I want to play it for you here. Hora. It's it's doing Horas. the right Hora. Horan. Horai. Horon. Horais. Horas. Okay, I shouldn't have spoken while it was speaking. This is the, co the this first column here is what he's reading. Okay, he's reading Erasmian pronunciation, which is closer to the Greek, the real Greek that was spoken in Jesus' day. All right, it is not modern pronunciation. There is a fad for the modern pronunciation, which is totally wrong. If you want to know what the Bible Greek sounds like, you need to go to Bible Greek. Now, Erasmian pronunciation is not quite the same as. What the Bible says its pronunciation is, which you can tell by the transliteration in the LXX and the Hebrew. All right, but it's closer than modern. Look at the modern. Ora, oras, ora, oran, ore, oron, ores, oras. Okay, that's not anything like the way it was. There's a book that you can get. I, I think it's really cheap. This mine was 19 bucks. Oxford Grammar of Classical Greek by a guy named James Morwood. He goes through this issue about pronunciation and how it was more in the classical Greek sense. There was a great deal of debate about that book um, in B Greek which goes through this debate every single day about the pronunciation. The guy that's championing another third pronunciation, which is somewhere between modern and Erasmian, is a guy named Randall Booth. The problem with his um, explanation, which a lot of scholars respect, is that he's taking it from a 300-year span of history based on the Dead Sea Scrolls and based on illiterate people, the people who, who spoke spoke Greek without a whole lot of education. That is not the Greek of the Bible. That might have been the Greek of the street. And their misspelling and their mispronunciation might have been that of the street. But that's not the people who wrote the Bible were not of that category. There is standard English and then there's hillbilly English. So he's basically saying that hillbilly Greek is what we all should be speaking when we're reading the Bible. I totally disagree, and so does the Bible's own method of transliterating the Hebrew. It doesn't agree with Booth, it doesn't agree with Erasmus, and it doesn't agree with modern. It's actually a mix of all three. So, what do you want to learn? Go with Morwood's classical Greek, because it's the closest to from what I can see in the um, transliterations. So just get that book at Amazon. All right, again, here's the Erasmian pronunciation, which is closer to Morwood's. Hora, Horas, Hora, Horan, Horai, Horon, Horais, Horas. That's closer. 
that's the speech and that's the pattern that scholars have been following for like, I don't know, 500 years. All right, that's closer to Attic Greek. All right, so follow that if you're going to follow something standard. But Erasmian Greek is not quite the way it's supposed to be. All right, it gets a couple of syllables wrong. The modern Greek gets a couple of syllables right that the Erasmian gets wrong. Ora, ora. Ora, oron, ore, oron, ores, oras. Okay, it's not pronouncing the H sound, the rough breathing. That's because modern Greek is lazy. All right. So that's something that you want to consider when you decide how you're going to learn your pronunciation. Okay, so that, and I'm going to end this increment and come back because of the sirens that are outside. There's always sirens near me.